All right, welcome everybody. Uh, Leo Cannell here with the Seven Figures Club podcast. We've got an amazing guest for you today, Timothy R. Johnson. And uh, Timothy R. Johnson, I've known this man for a while. He is an entrepreneur. He's a real estate investor. He's an author. He's a speaker. And he's also known as the sales whisperer. He's been very successful at teaching organizations how to tweak and adjust and fix their sales process and streamline it so that they can help more clients and do it profitably. I've seen him take organizations uh, doing a few hundred thousand dollars in sales, increase it to millions of dollars. And one of the other things you'll learn about uh, Tim as we go through this interview is he's a man of integrity. He does what he says he's going to do. He, he taught me the importance of serving your clients, serving business owners. And so I'm very excited to ask him a lot of questions about his background and all of the different companies he's held for the last 30 years. Uh, Tim is easily responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars in sales from all the organizations who he's taught to grow their bottom line, grow their sales by tweaking those processes. He's got his own books. He has his own sales programs and marketing systems. And I want to say he's a master referral source. Like, He's one of those guys who just knows all the different places to go to be able to help a business grow. So I know we've got a lot of startups. We've got a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs on this podcast listening. And today you're in for a treat. Welcome to the show, Tim Johnson. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. There are over 32 million businesses in the U.S. and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi-seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. All right, Tim. So super excited to, to have you on. It's uh, It's been a while since you and I have touched base, but we've had, been fortunate to do a number of entrepreneurial events uh, over the last few years. So I guess, Tim, one of the first things that uh, new business owners and those who have been in business for a few years have to learn, especially over the last year, is how do you kind of adjust to adversity? I think one of the things you're great at is, is being able to pivot when market conditions change. So how have you, uh, you know, seen business owners pivot and, and adapt to the new environment that we've seen over the past year? Well, bro, you know, it's one of the things we talked about years ago, right? It's we're, we're, we have been so labeled by the world. A kid doesn't have ADD if he can play video games for eight straight hours. Right. And business. Owners, well, my mom said, great. If you're if, right, it's opinion versus advice. Right. It's one of those things. If the person giving you an opinion isn't where you want to be, then it's an opinion. If somebody is where you want to be, then consider it advice, right? But everybody wants to take on all these new things. Like, for example, what did they do 100 years ago when none of these labels, per se, didn't exist, right? We're frozen by whatever it is. And in my experience, most business owners are frustrated in doing stuff because they're generally working on things they're not good at. Right. That's just right. They're all of a sudden they got to do marketing or they got to do sales or they got to do, you know, they got to do funding. Right. I don't. Here's the thing. I don't need to be Leo Cannell if Leo's standing right next to me. OK. And I've been through your program and, you know, did all the crazy stuff. It's, it's Prado's principle. Right? Here's one of the things. If we're supposed to spend 80 percent of our time with the 20 percent of people we're for, what do you do with the other 80 percent? You sell them to your friends. Adversity, here's what's interesting about adversity. Adversity is perspective. Okay, for example, you know, we talked about imagine being, you know, six years old, you turn on the TV to find out your dad's a serial killer. 30 years later, he killed nine people, he killed six people in a steakhouse and a family three weeks before that on the side of the road in Oklahoma. And it was one of those things growing up, come to find out, I was at Easter this last year and, and unbeknownst to me, I found my family last August a year ago and was ab actually able to go down and visit. Well, here's what's funny. My future daughter-in-law is, crim is studying criminal psychology like Dr. Bull. And she became enamored with the story. So she started looking it up and told her grandma and told her mom, come to find out. I didn't know this. Like, so my wife and them are whispering, which most women do. And my wife, the next day at work says, Oh, by the way, did you know that uh, our daughter-in-law's grandmother, first cousin was one of your dad's victim? I'm like, dude, that's on Easter. That's trippy. 
right? I mean, but here's the perspective, you know, being raped and being molested and, and being beaten and, and going through all this stuff. We live in the 90th percentile of the world, right? Okay, so if we live in the 90th percentile of the world, I can walk from here to my kitchen sink to go get a glass of water. Okay, most people can't do that. So it's perspective. What I find interesting is I can bring somebody from Africa, from the Philippines, somebody from overseas and put them right in the place you are and they'll succeed. Why? Because they're relentless. They're not, they're not built by, they're not lived by their fears. They don't live by, I mean, here's the thing. We'd really be screwed if like, if all the farmers decided to look at their cows, go, you know, sorry, it's got COVID. I can't do it. Can't milk my cows today. And you know, the farmers of the world just said, you know, oh, nope, we're not going to do that. But society has put, you know, and again, I'm not saying there's not, you know, medical things that go on, but, you know, we almost self-diagnose ourselves anymore. You know what I mean? And it's just one of those things. And people are like, how much do you know about funding? A whole bunch. Okay, what can you tell me about it? Nothing. But I can give you the guy that does. And the difference is I don't try to do one of the biggest things that I try to share with business owners, especially in influence, you are the people you hang out with. You've been to a couple of different events with me. I just called you up. Dude, can you be there? You made money. I made money. And so did the promoter. Okay. And they were happy. So they're going to invite us back. Okay. Because, but it was a fit. I didn't just do, it's not like I call up and do hundreds of thousands of referrals, right? I just do the right referrals, right? But I've been through your program. I don't go, I don't refer anybody's program unless I know the program. I knew the in and out. You, you spent time with me. So when I was with the companies, I could actually identify whether it was probably going to be a good fit for funding or it wasn't. Right. And that was that night we went to dinner and we went to those things. I don't need to know everything there is to know about funding. If I can just text my brother and say, Hey dude, real quick, I got this prospect. Yes or no. And you made it a line like portal for me. So it was really easy when we were at the event for it to happen. Right. I don't need to be an expert in that arena. Cause when you try to be everything to everyone, you're nothing. Okay. So one of the first things that, you know, if you're a new business owner or you're trying to adjust to what's going on is focusing in on your strengths and spending 80% of your time doing what you do best. And then for all those other deals that come in, don't try and figure all those out. Send those off to your friends and to proven business professionals, and then make sure you have a, a you know an agreement where you're going to be compensated for sending that business in. Well, and that's my experience, Leo. Me, you know, when I asked you, what was one of the very first lessons? Like, dude, I'm happy to refer you, but how much money do I make? Right? People come to me all the time. I'll take care of you. That's not an agreement. No. It's just not. There's got to be specific. That doesn't. There's got to be something with numbers. Okay. And it's just one of those things. If I don't know what it is, I have hundreds of people a month. Oh, dude, can you promote this? Okay. What? You know? What do I get? And they go, because so many people are used to doing it for free. But how many checks or how many checks are you taking out of your kids' bank account because you don't ask? Right? And it's just one of those things. It's perspective. You know, here's the thing. I, yes, did I grow up, you know, I lived in a car for the first six years of my life. You know, I was in lots of foster homes and lots of crazy things happened. You know, hit by the SWAT team and just did all the drugs and did all the party and did all, all the stupid shit any teenager can do and even into my, into my adulthood. But it was one of those things. When at a very young age, I got to listen to 51 Vietnam vets tell me the craziest story. And like, I get up in the middle of the, when I'm done, I'm like, dude, I'm not as messed up as any of y'all. Like it wasn't, it was just perspective, right? The whole perspective changed because I was told it was poor me. And then I hear these Vietnam vets and some of the stories they tell you. And like, it's like, you can't even make it up, right? And I still get goosebumps when I talk about it because it's just, you, you just can't fathom it, right? You just can't because you weren't there. You know, it's funny, and it, like a Vietnam vet, when we go to, to biker parties with them, you would you'd be spending time with them, and the guys knew if you were full of shit or not. They just did. Because they instantly, if you didn't know, like, I was in 1969, I was here, like, the guys knew, right? So most of the time, I just check out, and it was one of those things. You know, and, and the biggest thing in business, okay, like, do I need to know funding? No, like, I, for example, I ask more questions than probably most of your JV people. But I don't know. So the thing is, if I try to talk about funding, and I mean, I know a lot about it, but not nearly, okay. Like people come to me all the time, like, dude, you're a wealth of knowledge on this. I'm like, yeah, but my buddy's even tenfold that. I mean, it depends. What, if you just need some little bit of information, great. I could probably give you that to see if you're if that's something that you're going to need in your business. If it's not, then I'm not even going to make the referral, okay, because there's no reason. So I already have, you know, kind of what I call the one pager on my referral partners. And if that one pager fits, great, then I'll make the intro. 
if it doesn't fit, just like when we, you know, we did that thing down in Dallas, I called you up. Yes or no is this a good fit? You're like, Hey, you know, I like that. That's good. Right. So it wasn't like I just started texting you a bunch, you know, and you got to think, and one of the biggest things in influence, um, you know, Leo, think about this. When somebody comes to you and all they do is talk about how bad ass they are, what does your mind do? You check out because everybody wants to know, you know, how can they help you? And so that's what I, something I've learned a lot from you, Tim, is instead of going in and talking about everything you can do, it's asking people the right questions and asking the one you asked that I love is how can I serve you? You know, how can I help give you the result you need? And then as long as you have the credibility, knowledge and can do what you say you're going to do, then that's that's something that I learned a lot from you. Well, even in new business, here's the thing is if that's what our minds do, then why do we tell people what we do for a living? See, when you go up to somebody, one of the things I told you before, hey, how can I help you? Well, if first of all, if you're the expert, why do you ask that question? I never asked you how it can help you. I asked how it's going to serve. See, poor people need helped. Rich people need served because they're the kings of their castle. Okay. And the thing is, if you walk up to somebody that has money and you go, how can I help you? They're instantly shut up. I don't need any help. I, I, I don't need your service because they think they're being sold. See, if you go through, there's five steps. And I, I learned this from one of my great mentors as well. I mean, mentors have mentors and, and JV partners serve each other. Okay. One of the, the biggest things in going into business, if our mind shuts off that way, and I share with a lot of people, let the quality of the questions you ask equal to quality of life you live. Right. If you ask the right questions. Okay. Now I want to know where they are presently. For example, most of the time when I'm sitting down with people, I'm like, what do you want to, if we're sitting down at a table three years from now, what do you want to achieve? I want to make more money. That's bullshit. It's not the money. It's what the money does is what they're looking for. So I'm going to ask more questions. What specifically is it like, in your case, you have beautiful kids. Like that's a good part of what I know about you, right? That's a big piece of why you and your wife do the things you do because you wanted to give them a life that was different. But we don't know our JV partners like that. You know, I did one, it's a mutual friend of ours. You know, he said, I was mean to him. I was rough. And, but he sent me a card to do, you know, that was some dark times for me. And I just jumped his ass. I'm like, dude, this doesn't serve you. Don't care what the church says. I don't care because none of these other people are serving you. They're not. And if you put the pressures here and you're putting the pressures there, no, this doesn't work. So either I'm going to slap the fire out of you because this is the way you're treating people or you're not going to like me. And I had a couple of my students with me didn't like what I had to say. I told him I don't care. A year later, the man's making more money than he ever knows what to do with. And he sends me a gift. All, it happens all the time because sometimes we don't see in our own fishbowl. I don't try to be, if I'm not good at something, that's the biggest thing. I don't work on it. I don't want to. I'll search out the best of the best in referral partners. So I don't. And here's the thing. They send me free checks. And most of the time I get more money than most referral partners because I'm not sending $97 clients. I'm sending five, 10, $20,000 clients. So I know you've worked with a lot of business coaches and organizations that train and teach people how to do things like invest in real estate and start different businesses and different niches. And I know you've helped a lot of those businesses grow. What does that process look like and, and how do you make that happen? And for those looking to, you know, expand their business and, and grow a business coaching or consulting organization, you know, how would that work for them to work with you? And what are the first things you would look at with them? Well, to be fair, it's by, I, I don't take on everybody because here's the thing. There's three investments in your life, Leo. We talked about them before. Time, money, and change. What's the most important? Time. Time's mathematical, brother. If you make a hundred grand a year, okay, you're mathematically making $48 an hour if you're working 40 hours or whatever that hour is. Time's a mathematical equation. It's something, if you don't know time management, if you want to go from a hundred grand to 300 grand, you got to change your habits right? You're going to have different family habits. You're going to have different systems. You're going to have different things like math doesn't lie. Okay. You're not going to have the same habits. If you went through a time management exercise of your time right now, and I ask you, do me a favor, have somebody follow you for a week and tell me how many 10 or $20 an hour things that you do. And if you don't do that, your money will go up. Okay. But we don't look at it time. Yes. It's the one commodity that we can never get back. But if we want to grow, 
and we want to do the things that we want to do, okay, if we got super hyper-focused on that, you said, if we spend 80% of our time on that 20% of things we're good at, and we really started to build, okay, my Rolodex is what sells my boardrooms. It's not. People think, oh, dude, you're a genius. No, I'm just surrounded by geniuses. I just understand. Because here's one of three things. If you want a simple exercise, here's the thing. Listen for three words. The problem is, the challenge is, the issue is. See, Leo, when you say the problem is, what do you create for yourself? Problems. The problem. But the difference is, we're told we have to overcome that. Why do I need to overcome it? They're telling me exactly what the problem is. Okay, if my product or solution takes care of that, I don't make up nothing. I'm going to talk to them, okay? Because once I figure out what they're dreaming, I'm going to ask them what their challenges are facing and getting there. When they always start, well, the problem is, you know, I went through these programs. I'm like, great. I know people that are very successful in those programs. I know some people that are not, right? Would you mind if I tell you my greatest fear is that would you assume that you're probably scared because you bought all this crap, you didn't go through it, okay, to be honest, okay, you didn't want to. I said, here's the thing. Most of my referral partners will tell you I don't read. I will jump on because this is not the way I learn. But I'll jump on with them an hour, two hours, three hours. And even if I have to make it over a couple of weeks, I go through their process because I don't want to send them thousands. I want to send them 10 or 20 or 30 of the right ones. So that when I pick up the phone, they answer, right? Because I'm not calling for BS. You know, I may call Chris, hey, love you guys. You know, for example, people forget the word I love you. Okay, they're like, that's weird. I mean, why is it weird, dude? I, I, if I love my people, I love their kids. Like there's a thing in my business is that I don't, right? One of the things I told you right away, who do I work for? Your kids. Because during this process, if you're doing something stupid, I'm probably going to piss you off, right? Because you're not serving them. I'm going to ask you, does this right to check into your kid's account or don't? Okay, but nobody wants to be that loving person, right? Tough love is one of the greatest things that anybody grows in. You know, I've had great mentors. Listen, it wasn't the mentors that, oh, my God, great job. No, it was the one that tied me to a stop sign in Washington, D.C. because I called a bunch of Vietnam vets, pansies, because I was wondering why they were crying because I didn't understand it. Okay. The biggest thing the business that you get is, listen, people are like, what if he burned you? Great. Next. Okay. But what if he doesn't? What if I get to know their family? What if I get to know the referral? Right. Now, think about this. If you want to make more money and I don't want to take any more time, how hard is it to pick up the phone and make a referral? Right in the book, SOLD, that Emerson Brantley and I wrote, SOLD is an acronym, okay? See, it's strategy over tactics. When you, If you don't have a strategy for your business, which is the roadmap for your business, okay? O stands for objections equal opportunities. People are telling you, you don't need to overcome the objection. The objection is what they're telling you, what the problem is. Well, I'm going to ask them, is this a problem or is this something? I break it down. I said, it'd be really easy. Is this actually a problem or is this something you just might not be an expert in? Okay. And they go, well, actually, it's not a problem. I've just never done it. I'm like, great. Did you learn Spanish in a day? Like, I don't even want to do that. I have my uncle. Like, don't get me wrong. I I just met my my uncle. I love his uncle Willie. I love him to death. But like, I go to the Mexican store because he wants me to bring stuff when I go visit. And I'm like, dude, I grabbed this thing. I'm like, I hand it to the Mexican guy. And blah, 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 blah. the guy hands me says, time to go pay for it. Like, people are like, oh, that's difficult. No, it's not. I just don't know Spanish. So I'd, I'd be asking the guy, like, you want to go on a date or something? I'd be asking him something, or something even off the wall. But the thing, the L in sold is leverage your referral partners. Right? There's a guy in Northwestern Mutual said it best. Somebody asked him years and years ago. He's, you know, and it was a funny story when I heard it from one of the mentors. The guy said, listen, why are you so successful? Like, you beat everybody in the insurance game. Like, and not even a little. I mean, by hands down, grand slammed any salesperson in the business. He says, I can only tell you one trick. He said, what? I don't look for business for myself. I look for my 11 other friends. And those 11 other friends do the same thing, which put them on the top of the sales, right? Because if 80% of people aren't for you, why not create a revenue stream out of it? Okay, you want to create influence. Uh, which way do you think you create more influence, brother? Me adding money to your kids' bank accounts or taking it away? Got it. Add it. Right? The reason I got asked to be on here, man, we haven't talked, we, we'll, you, you know, since our last event, you know, we just got busy and all of a sudden I think, hey, let me call Timmy. Like your friends remember you, especially when you add zeros to their pocketbook. 
Okay. Percent. Now, one of the things that uh, a lot of business owners need to really take that next step and build that next campaign are the big joint venture strategic partnerships. And that's something that you're very, very good at. So what's the best way to reach out to those big strategic partners? And then how do you create those relationships that last? Because I've bumped into people in our industry and seminars, events, virtual events, uh, business organizations, and so many people know you, like you, and trust you. How do you reach out to these uh, organizations and people? And, and how do you build relationships that last? Say hi. I just get to know them. I don't talk about what I do. I am, most people have no, here's the thing, you're going to have those people that absolutely love me. And then you're going to have some haters that are over here. I listen, that haters fuel me because thank God I ain't got to hang out with them because they're miserable. I don't want to, I have no idea. First of all, they don't pay people. They, they don't want to work, but yet they want my time. No, thank you. Okay. See, when you, when you start to have respect for you, for your standards and for your kids' standards, things will show up differently. Here's the thing I can call, listen, for in our world, yes or no, if you need somebody, Leo, you're like, hey, I need one of these guys. Yes or no, what I give you the pro on somebody I trust, vice versa. I don't think it's stupid. Here's the thing. People are like, oh, I don't want to look stupid in front of my referral partner. You're an idiot. Like, why Why do I look like an idiot if I, like, for example, I'm, I'm writing a book right now called Unemployable. It's going to be the story of my life. And so I, I met a young lady and, you know, I put a front door in for her. And then I overheard her daughter talking about just, just being fair. She's, you know, she had watched this crazy off the wall thing about pedophiles and some other things. Well, she asked me to stop by actually going down to see my uncle. So I sat down. I'm like, honey, you're not looking for attention. You're looking for connection. I said, and it just, this dynamic thing rolled and it was funny. I'm actually invited and actually got invited. This is crazy. So she just, and it's, uh, and if I find it in a minute, it's, it's unemployable, happily unemployable confession of a serial killer's kid. Right. Like if you look the way drug dealers make money, the simplest way to make money. Like I just grew up watching that. So I just like, OK, listen, if you've never seen a drug dealer ever have to sell a drug addict, did you? Like that is stuck in my head for years. OK, for example, if I think you're a good fit for a referral partner, I'll refer it because I'm going to get paid. But most people, when they're broke, they think they look stupid because they ask. I think I'm I think you're stupid if you don't. Right. When you ask, I'm like, no, did I when I got when I did that connection in Dallas, I didn't get in the way. I'm like, Leo, meet Mike, Mike, meet Leo. Yes or no. And guess what happened? You showed up and I got paid twice. I got paid for selling the, the sponsor and I got paid for this. And everybody knows like this is my jam. So I didn't make them anything because I, I wasn't lying to anybody that that's how I get paid. You know, uh, you know, it's just one of those things if you ask, but, you know, you, you feel, if you call me up and ask me for a road, you don't feel stupid. Most millionaires don't. They're like, dude, who do you know does it? That's just the way it happens. But for some reason, when you're in that space and in your own perspective, you're like, well, I, I'd rather just figure it out on my own. I'm like, okay, if, if your average, think about this mathematically. Like, Leo, just give me, when you, the first year you started Seven Figure Fund, I, I still remember when you did because you broke away. What was your What was your hourly rate then? Just ballpark for the first year. And I know you, you exploded it really quickly. Yeah, I mean, we grew really fast, but it was 80-hour 80, 80 work weeks. And, I mean, it's... It, but just that uh, first year, what, what would you say your hourly salary is? You know, uh, personally, it was probably, probably like $150 an hour. 150 okay. Here's the thing. So, wouldn't this be... So, to be an expert in something, if you're... Okay, for a guy like you, okay... So if you wanted to learn real estate, now I know you know some of it, but I'm saying, let's say you wanted to learn. Not like you do, but we're going to talk about that. Right. And that's fine. But I'm saying, say you wanted to learn. Okay. Let's just yeah. let's do some math. So culture has told all this stuff, right? So let's do this. It takes 10,000 hours, right? Simple math. I'm an expert. Yeah. Times 150. So if you wanted to learn what I do, it would cost you $1.5 million minus the hours that you're going to take away trying to figure out what I'm doing. Opportunity cost, opportunity, opportunity lost right, cost, there. right Exactly. But business owners don't look at opportunity cost. Okay. The difference is everybody says, oh, you, you, it costs money to do it. No, I proved it. During COVID, I just wanted to prove that I could build my online brand spending no money. Well, I, I lie. 
there were, there was two people that I had built something and they were just so down and out that I paid them. Cause I, they were just, they were good people. So I did, but most of my book and my SEO and all that stuff, I have proven this time because I get tired of the shit. They're like, Oh, you have to have money to do. No, I just, I went and did what I was good at. I went up to my buddy's place on, and that does my SEO and I put a GERT system in and helped him do some business stuff there. And in exchange, he does my SEO. Good okay. Deal. Exchange I, I went, value. Exchange value, right? Cause I went down and I put a front door in and then I put a side door in with security door and we redid our laundry room. Here's what's funny. I just got invited. Okay. Uh, with Steve Harris and, uh, Jack Camfield to co-author <coughs> a book that she paid to want to be written. So one of the things I told her and her name is Lori and she's, she's super badass. And when she came to me, she says, um, Hey, I want to write your story. Let's partner on this. I said, okay. And then about three months ago, I said, hey, real quick, just before we get into this partnership, um, you keep saying my book. Well, we said we were going to partner on this. So are you co-authoring this with me? Or, no, it's what's your story. I said, why well, quit? She goes, what do you mean? I said, I quit. Don't want to write it. So I don't know how you went from wanting to be a partnership in this to be on as happily unemployable. And your name will be first on the book. Okay. She says, well, that's not fair. I said, I don't care what's fair. See, one of those things, I put her first. She will be first on the book. She will be first in the thing because I'm not writing the book. I'm telling her stories. I'm coaching her. I'm mentoring her. So she's pulling it out of me. And because she is always behind the scenes, where did I put her? And out of all the authors and all the books she's done, I was invited. She could have chosen anybody else. But when her daughter told me she was scared because the security of her door was janky, I wouldn't fix it. And I had three days. I do. We had a blast. Right. And I learned a lot about writing. Like, I don't feel stupid. She's like, oh, there's this word and this word like makes my brain hurt. I'm like, and she's like don't you know any of this? No, I don't. Don't want to either. Okay. Like, and then one of her friends did the same thing, you know, she's going through divorce and, and going through some stuff. I just made her believe what she was worth, you know, because if I would have, if I would have sold one of my referral partners for more than they believe they're worth, am I setting them up for failure? So Tim, I'm, I'm reading here in your bio, and I think we've talked about this where at one point you were working 100 hour work weeks, didn't have the time to spend with your family the way you wanted to. And you created this uh, this system called Stupid, uh, smart, talented, unique person in demand, and and somehow were able to grow the business, but cut your workload down by two thirds. I think there's a lot of us business owners with, that would love to learn that system. How do you decrease your workload, increase your efficiency, and get out of those 100 hour work weeks? Maybe at the beginning. I mean, we all have to do them at the beginning, but what's, how do we do that? How do we get to that? Well, point? and that's the thing. There's three investments in your life, time, money, and change. I mean, if yeah. you want to change, right, if you don't want to work 100 hour work weeks, okay, you need to figure out where you are mathematically, okay? For example, if you're making $20 an hour, right, is there a single mom that might be able to do some of those things that you don't have time for? Like maybe uh, go pick up groceries or, right? And you go, well, I can't afford it. No, if we look at your budget, everybody can. Okay, you're probably spending money on Starbucks. You're probably spending money on McDonald's. You're doing stupid shit, right? And it just is. There's always money in a budget. Or you could pick up something on the side to do it, okay? Because generally what we're doing is our 100-hour work weeks is because we're working on things we're not good at, okay? We just are, right? You're going to tell me, for example, how many words you type a minute? How many secretaries or admin person probably type five times as much as you? Okay. Yeah. Virtual assistants. I mean, virtual assistants. So, so what you're talking about is all that stuff. That's like 10 hour, 15 hour per, per hour stuff that you're wasting your time doing that you're not good at, that you shouldn't be doing. You should be focused on the stuff. That's the $150 an hour stuff that you do better than everybody else. Right. Cause so if you want to go like to the 300, good. even when you got it, when you're at the level you are now, you can't do that hundred fifty dollar an hour work anymore. Nope. You can't. You have to even even if it's twenty to twenty five, that makes you one hundred fifty. That's great. But eventually, the biggest thing that we never do is we never give people our decision process. See, the thing that I understand about my referral partners, I understand Leo's decision process. Right, I know the ideal client. I know the ideal, and again. If and I question it, it's just easy to pick. Hey, dude, you got five minutes? 
and we've done this, right? And I'm like, Leo, this is what's up. Yes or no, do you think you can help? This, you know, some I can get you in free, some cost. I mean, obviously, because that's what it is. And you're like, dude, got it. Cool. And then obviously, you know, I mean, we were able to work out a couple of them. You're like, hey, we didn't have to have a fee. And we were able to broker a, a deal where they could actually, it actually made more money, right? So it was, we would actually, you and I would have actually made more money had we not done it that way. But we were trying to service the client, so he invited you back. Okay, see what I'm saying? So it was a win-win for everybody. Okay, so I, I'd rather have I'd rather have 33% of a big pie than I would to have 100% of my own. And it really just works that way. If, and if you look at time management, people work 100-hour work weeks because they want to, not because they have to. And the thing is, all you would have to do, and here's the thing, get a different perspective. Right. The difference is when you're going through something, I, I told you very before, like today, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, kind of find out that Crazy. one of my guys, uh, you know, had OD. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love him. And, you know, last thing I remember, I was, you know, I was pretty distraught earlier. And, you know, like and there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, they're building my house over here and, you know, I got I got a gas station. I got my auto mechanic bar and I got a landscaping bar and I got my wood shop and you know, I got a sawmill and we just built this up. I didn't build it in one day. I, I built I do little projects throughout the year to keep building it up. But the thing is, everybody wants it now. They don't want to put the work into it. Like you don't plan a field. I mean, in every part of and all the realities of our world, what you sow is what you reap. Or what you reap is what you sow, right? If you, but we go out with that stuff. If you really sat down and looked through, am I cutting the grass? Am I taking the garbage out? Am I doing all this? Okay, a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, and there's, there's right. If you want to get out of that space, you got to do the things to get you out of that space. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. The difference is, oh, okay. Even if it's a, hey, even if it's somebody for twenty bucks, twenty five bucks, you know, even even if it's fifty bucks, right? Even if you just started very little, you know, you can get a virtual assistant or you might be able to get a young kid down the street that wants to cut your grass. You know, he's, you know, he's 13, 14 years old and let him use your lawnmower. That's how many, that, that's 45 minutes out of your day. Now that gives you 45 minutes back with your kids. That can give you 45 minutes back in your stuff. You know, for example, and there's all, with automation nowadays, and that's like the D and soul, right? It's duplication automation. What are you doing manually that can be duplicated? Okay. And I just got guys that are just super badass in tech, but if I don't know somebody I just pick up a phone, people are like you're in a board room. You just picked up the phone. Yeah. I want to know what this is. Cause I just searched for it. Okay. And because I hear the problem, I've been in some other seminar, or I've been in some other group where I've heard you or Ryan or, or one of these other guys tell me, Hey, this is really cool too. Hey, will this apply? <clears throat> and they go, yeah. I'm like, and then here's a, People wait. No, you already know. When I'm like, Theo, are you available? And usually, hey, I'm on a call. I'll call you right back. And you do. Because usually I have the person right there. Hey, and then we jump on a call because most people are like, oh, I'll do it next week. Oh, I'll do it next month. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, next you, you get it done right then and there as soon as possible. And so you're talking about delegating, you know, getting uh, people who are better at doing things than you so you can focus on what you're doing. And then also you're talking about technology, automated technologies that makes things easier, like auto automated uh, email responders and text messages. One thing that I really love that you uh, shared with me, and guys, this is so important uh, with your business, is online credibility and reviews, right? That So Tell Us app has just been dynamite for me, and I pay 100 bucks a month, and, and you introduced it to me, and I've got so many great uh, video testimonials, and it's so great because you just share that little link, and people uh, do a quick little video of themselves on their phone. They don't have to do anything complicated. Right. They click the button. And now I've got all these online reviews, like 150 reviews from this uh, application that you shared. And I can't tell you how many hundreds of thousands of dollars that's made me. Right. It does. But here's the thing. It's simplified, right? Because you didn't have to hire an editor to put it on your website, right? That $100 that we talked about was so inexpensive versus you hiring out a video team because you know you need those in business, okay? You know, I, I think right now I have 112 on my website. You do? And I just asked yeah. people, hey, would you mind leaving me a testimonial? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, and what's funny, they go, dude, it's on my phone. Yeah, I wanted to make it easy for you. And by the way, just say whatever you want. And I let them. Okay? And the difference is there's little tools like that. And there's, like, for example... You know, a lot of people use PayPal. So I use Ryan Fritzy for merchant services, right? Just, you know, and I get a check from him every month. Yep. 
It's just when people say the problem is my accounts got shut down. Great. I got a guy. Sam, and how many streams of income do you, do you have? I mean, you've got so many streams of income that are coming in every every month. And, and you know, what, what it, was that something you thought about or was it just something that happened? How did how do you I mean, you must have dozens, maybe hundreds of streams of income every month. Um, I, I probably have I think I have a little over 50, but they're not all steady streams. They're just they're referrals. Yeah. Right? So about sure. about half of those, you know, like I have my rentals. I got, you know, I have uh uh, certain business stuff that just pays every month referrals that I keep sending, uh, you know, so tell us sends me a check, you know, so just ones that I call, those are just, those are all the time. Right. So every time I refer somebody or do something, you just know it's there. Right. So part of that is just that deal. Right. So in doing that, I mean, a lot about, about 20 to 25, of my referral partners, you know, I can get, you know, for example, you know, you and I haven't, but I mean, when events come back, yes, or no, we jump right back where we were. It's just like guys that need funding will call me up. Hey, Leo will be over here. Right. Cause I, you know, a lot of my friends are promoters. That's who I chose to hang out with. And then because I could solve the problems they couldn't, I had the referrals that were gave them great results and we served them. You know, they're like, Timmy, you got to come back. Who do you know for this? Who do you know? And then once you have a good referral and they had a good experience, they're going to call you for the next one because most people don't vet their people, right? They just want to make up shit. And I, you just don't have to. I don't feel stupid. Like where I'm like, you remember when we were going through your stuff? I'm like, what are you talking about, Leo? Where, where in the world are you talking about on this application? I'm supposed to fill out. I'm like, and finally, like, dude, just give it to me. I'll just do it. I'm like, Thank God, because I was trying to figure it out. I'm, and you know, where most people would feel stupid doing that. I'm like, I have no idea what you're looking at. And then since then, I did my cabbage. I did my other ones. I got my city. Nice. I got my other one. Right. But I had to go. But I didn't understand it, and I asked a lot of questions during that process. And eventually you're like, never mind, just give it to me. Right. And it was just, you just got it done. And then after you got it done, you're like, okay, this is where you made the mistakes. Here's what it was. Oh, okay. I know guys that make that mistake, but I got firsthand experience because I wasn't afraid to look stupid. I don't think I look stupid anyway, because I don't know about it. No, the only stupid thing is not asking the questions is not learning what you don't know and, and not going to the right uh, expert to get the information and trying to waste your time figuring stuff out. Well, no, though, but somebody will say, I'm a funding expert. Great. Let me see your fun- Let me see what your house looks like. How many people have you funded? Right? I can go to your website. Just because now you have so tell us. If somebody goes to your website, how many other funding companies have that many testimonials? They don't. Right? So who's the obvious choice? You made yourself the obvious choice. One is because you dedicated into asking the people that you do great service for. Okay. And your company always has. So, and then all of a sudden you added one component that saved you a ton of time. Now you don't have to have a editor. You don't have to have your web guy, put it up. Like that's where the hundred bucks right there. hundred percent. And you send me $33 every month. Thank you. Let's, let's talk about uh, working uh, smarter, making your money work for you. I think you're one of the best individuals I've ever met that makes your money work harder than you do for the money. Right. And so you take, I know you've taken a lot of uh, your capital and profits over the years and put it into you know, different uh, real estate investments and a lot of it cash flow uh, investments. What does that uh, strategy look like and, and what should uh, business owners be doing, uh, you know, and, and know about uh, real estate and, and how can how can they work with you on stuff like that and learn? Well, you know, my wife and I own a management company in Indiana, you know, and it's just one of those things is a lot of people like they'll get a big chunk of money They're like, oh, I'm going to buy a car. I'm like, great, let's let's do the thing. So most cars, you're never going to find money cheaper than you can find it right now. So let's just say you made 30 grand. Okay. Or you made 40 grand. Okay. So most cars nowadays cost as much as a house in Indiana. Okay. But here's the thing. If you're, if, if you can buy a house for uh, 40 or 50 grand. Okay. And that let's just say it rents for six, six fifty in the area car payment. So now I bought an asset that offsets the money that pays for my car. Asset that probably is going up in value. Whereas that car, going down right but one goes down the other one goes up that's so, called smart money it's just smart money and right it's just you've got you've got a lot of smart money out there working for you and i and i know you're, you've got dozens of, of real estate rentals and these are just cash flow and then you've got the tax write-offs and the depreciation and and so it's really just a matter of and one of the you've got a big uh, big advantage there in indiana i mean and a lot of states, uh, property is not as affordable, but you, you've got great uh, affordable real estate. I mean, I'm sure it's not as affordable maybe as it was a couple of years ago, but uh, yeah, but it's coming back. That's, that's been awesome too. 
listen, I've assumed mortgages from people just because they call you up. They have problems. They're like, I can't do this. I'm, and then I'll just go, I'll do it properly. I'll pay the mortgages and, you know, I'll, I'll pay a year ahead in, in advance. And, you know, you just kind of solve the problem and, and people give them to you. Huh. And when you can do, when you do what everybody else does, you can have what everybody else can. Yeah. It, it really comes down to that. You know, for example, the only reason I'm on here is years ago, I'm like, hey, let's get, let's invest in each other a little bit. Let me see how I can serve. You know, you're, you're kind of when you first started seven figure funding. And, you know, because you came very successful business before that you I think you were kind of partners, but you wanted your own for you, for the sake of your family, which is smart. And now you don't, you know, and doing that. You know, all right, let me help them boost up. See, when you help somebody when they're down or they're coming up, what if they if a lot of times they'll remember when they're up. OK, and when they do, here's the thing. And if they don't bye, Right. Just those people, people that are natural givers will always be givers. They just will. You know, I like serving those kind of people because that's the thing. You know, for example, I'm sure if you and I sat in a room from a business consulting standpoint, you'd give me a hundred tips on what am I doing wrong and vice versa. But we don't look at it that it's something that we're doing wrong. It's something that we're doing that's not productive. Okay. And you can, because here's the thing. I don't work on my own stuff. I will trade with one of my brothers or one of my people that's a business consultant to tell me, because it's my own perspective. It's my own fishbowl. Right. Somebody says, Hey, what do you think about this website? I don't dude. I still, you remember that picture I showed you that one time? I still, my wife still dresses me. Like I pull out this thing. I didn't even dress me. Like, I don't know what matches. Like I'm in a sweatshirt. My boys are out working. I don't this. either. I'm colorblind. I'm like, yeah, tell me, a, tell me what I yeah, should I get. Just go get my I'm clothes for <laughs> I, I, I can at least read blue, you know, pink shirt, you know, black tie, whatever. I mean, so I don't. I don't want to do that. I mean, and one of the, the greatest lessons, of, if you ever hear Matt Basak, I'm like, the dude wears shorts. He's got like two outfits or something, or even one. Like the guy doesn't even have to. He's like, dude, I'm good. Shorts, this. If I need a hoodie, I got one, right? And that just, he just wears his stuff, and he knows what it is. You know, and he's one of the best guys in internet marketing I know. He's just, he's just talented, and he's just a rock star. And it just, you know, I was like James Dentley came out here. He's like, dude, why don't you tell more people? Don't need to. Right. I don't, I, I don't invite people that want to see what I'm doing that I like. I don't feel like hanging around takers and retards, right? Because they don't want to change their habits, right? They, they'll come to you. Well, I tried this program. The problem is the challenges, the issue is like, dude, when I start hearing that, yeah, like, no, like, dude, unless you want to be a client, we are not hanging out because that's your entire life's going to be that. There's no control. They're always blaming someone else for their lack of success and all of our lack of success it's on me. It's, it's on us. Like, but my friend, right? But you called him a friend. So obviously you picked him. Well, but you don't understand. No, I did. Let's let's start. Where, okay, let's go back to the beginning. Yes or no, you just called him a friend. If you're hanging out with him and he's being like this, that's your choice not to be friends with him. Yes or no? And they go. All right. And they'll keep going for two or three times. I'm like, okay, let's go oh, back. Yeah. First, okay. First of all, okay. If you want to be something different and you are the five people you hang out with, you hang out with. Like the minute someone told me that, I'm like, oh, I get it. I looked around. I was broke. I'm like, yeah, I need to go find these guys. <laughs> so I just Spend time with the right people. Yeah, like my mentor, uh, you know, we call him Double R. He's like, dude, you ask more questions than anybody I know. And I became the most successful student he ever had in the drywall business. That's why. It's, the, it's asking I, the right I questions. Yeah, I never so, feel stupid about asking. So, Tim, how, how what are the opportunities? Uh, obviously, you can't work with everybody, and, and your time is limited. And you know, what are the different uh, ways that uh, some of these uh, business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs can connect up with Tim Johnson, and and uh, and what should they uh, you know be thinking about and doing in order to make themselves a good fit? You know, for some of the uh, amazing solutions that you provide. Well, do me a favor. Here's the thing. Um, one of the things I'd like you to consider is don't try to fit into something that doesn't fit. That's where most people have a challenge. Okay. Here's the thing, guys. If you do connect with me and you're the right fit, great. Then we'll figure it out. If you're not, I probably have the connection that is. Okay. Because I don't believe in fitting a round hole. In a, I don't feel like fitting a square peg in a round hole. It don't fit. Okay. And then you're just going to be a pain in the ass. You're going to be pissed at me all the time. Like that's not going to happen. The difference is if, if it's something I'm good at, Great. Then we can work on that. Uh, if it's a team we need, I got those people as well. You know, it is one of those things. I don't try to fit. You know what I mean? Listen, uh, I'm just a regular guy. I have no problem having conversations. You know what I mean? 
And, you know, like, for example, you can text the word register to 574-203-9605. Um, that's my Wide Wealth app. I mean, that's one way to connect to me. Again, that number is 574-203-9605. Text the word register. And it's just my Wide Wealth app. It's a lot of Timisms, a lot of the way around the way I think and and this thing like farmers, you know, they don't look at their fields. We just, you know, I've, I've always been an operator. So I understand how things operate. That's my, my jam. Like I'm not the creative, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I understand. Do I understand finances? Yes. Do I understand a lot of things? Yeah. But do I have guys that know way better than me? Yes, I do. And it's just one of those things when you, you know, if you, if you do hang out in our world, for example, one of the new books coming out, you know, go to Amazon and go to uh, get the book sold. It'll give you a different dynamic on the 80, 20 rule because it's okay to do work on the 20% of PBR for, but why not make a little bit of pocket change or even more money, even during this pandemic, serving some of your other friends. Cause here's the thing, when you start adding zeros to their paycheck and they start sending you money, like the minute you get that, trust me, it's like, it's an addiction. You're like, dude, I'm sending that guy more money, right? Because he's going to start sending you money to your kid's bank account. And the book sold like four bucks, five bucks on Amazon. I, I didn't make it expensive. It just, it's an easy book. It's just value. It's just valuable. And, and then you've got your website at uh, timothyrjohnson.com. By the way, the site is looking amazing. Yeah, I didn't do that either. Yeah, no, I don't do my sites either. <laughs> I don't either, no. So, uh, guys, Timothy R. Johnson, timothyrjohnson.com. Uh, he's got a, a contact page there, real estate mentorship, speaking, media, business coaching services, a lot of different information, been featured in a lot of places and done uh, the massive uh, entrepreneurial events probably in every state in this country. I've been around. Yeah. Well, awesome, Tim. We really appreciate all the value that you shared with us today. Again, guys, Timothy, timothyrjohnson.com is the site you want to head to and uh, reach out to Tim. He's, uh, he's accessible. He's solutions focused. And if he doesn't have the best option, I guarantee you he knows somebody who does. Oh, always. Yep. Are you looking for more seven-figure secrets, content, or even how you can launch your own recession-proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven, F-I-G-U-R-E-S.com, where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession-proof. Thank you for listening, and if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five-star and invite others to join the club.